Welcome to Sports Sometimes. I'm TJ Carpenter. Tonight, we're going to talk about mascots. Yes, the anthropomorphically confused creature suits we use to distinguish our universities and professional sports teams from all other universities and professional sports teams. They're like furries, except they don't have to register in a public database. Though not all of them are unique, there are 24 tigers in the United States. There are 47 bulldogs, Georgia's Ugga among them, who keeps dying from hip dysplasia, so they have to keep inbreeding this poor pathetic animal over and over again, which is, by the way, causing the hip dysplasia that's killing it. And Arkansas Tech is getting really fast and loose with the rules. Even though their nickname is the Wonder Boys, their mascot is a bulldog named Jerry. Then, of course, you have the deviant mascots. There's Slugger, the Kansas City Royals mascot, and he is without question the most redneck mascot you will ever come across. He was once photographed getting a lap dance from a naked stripper at a bachelor party, we think. And he followed that up by shooting a fan in the face with a hot dog cannon. Then there's uh, the Stanford tree, who was picked at random from the unwashed masses that have been living out in the woods outside Stanford's campus. Plaster face Pistol Pete, whatever the hell these things are. And Wichita State's mascot, who looks like a severed leg with a face. Then, of course, you have the kind-hearted idiot mascots. Your Big Owls, your Clemson Tigers, your Arkansas Razorbacks, whatever the hell Wake Forest's mascot is. Apparently, many of them need new mortgages with their childlike wonderment. And how awesome is Rocket Mortgage? They can get a tiger on cocaine, a mortgage. But then, of course, there are the racist and atrocity-adjacent mascots. There should not be a name change, which is not about race. It's not about disrespect. It's about loving the Redskins. Redskins is objectively terrible, but it's also an example of a word that's been appropriated by sports from racists, which is a weird thing that happens in sports with different results, because a mascot is a symbol of strength. Obviously, you'd want something that makes you proud. For instance, the New York Yankees. Yankee, a pejorative term used for Americans by British soldiers, the New York press in 1913 chose to start calling the New York Highlanders the New York Yankees or Yanks because it was easier to fit into the headline. So racism in this instance was just more convenient. But no one is offended by Yankees. Not anymore anyways, even though they may be again someday. The Ole Miss Rebels had a chance to change their name because of the racist connotations of the Old South it had. But do you know how many mascots have ties to the Civil War? Pretty much all of them. There's the Tigers of Missouri and the Jayhawks of Kansas, named after different Civil War platoons that fought against each other in the war. And that tradition has continued, except now they just passive aggressively take credit for things that bother each other. Hawkeyes, Native American, Tar Heels, Civil War, Volunteers, War of 1812. I don't even know history well enough to know why that's racist. Utes are Native American, but it's okay because they got permission. Of course they did uh, use the term Redskins until 1972. Then if you've got the uh, Southern Miss Golden Eagles, that's Civil War, and they changed it from Confederates in 1970. Now I know why all these mascots need second mortgages. They're too racist to get work anymore. The Texas A&M Aggies? The Aggies got their nickname because an agriculture professor once went all the way to Austin, Texas just to punch a state senator in the face. And that's where they get fighting Aggies. Maybe one day they'll change their name to Fighting Douches. Speaking of which, the Fighting Irish. The Fighting Irish were a band of Union soldiers and the chaplain of the platoon later served at Notre Dame and named the football team. You can always find a problem with mascots in sports for one reason or another. But the good news is they used to be so much worse we are slowly getting better, fortunately. Uh, Pink, uh, Peck in Illinois uh, is home to the dragons, which of course is a mythical creature, should offend no one but tiny village people. But then you find out uh, their original nickname was the Peck and Chinks, and they didn't change it until 1980. Now dragons doesn't seem so nice anymore, does it? There's also the Freeburg, Illinois midgets, who haven't changed their name in 2017. But we are getting better, except apparently Illinois. So what's next? Now we can move on to insulting whole new groups of people. We no longer have to watch mascots do cartwheels and terrorize children on the sideline. We no longer have to watch mascots that are unimaginative as they are creepy. In 20 years, instead of the Cleveland Indians, we can have the Cleveland LeBrons. Instead of the Washington Redskins, we can have the Washington International Embarrassments. Instead of the Freeburg Midgets, we can have literally anything else. This is Sports Sometimes. I'm TJ Carpenter.